good morning. It is Tuesday. It's October 3rd. You're watching the news at 9 on the ABC 10 Information Network. I am Dina Kupfer. All right, we're going to start this morning, of course, with Las Vegas. A lot of people are still reeling after the big shooting that killed at least 59 people. 527 people are still recovering physically, but we know many more are recovering emotionally. Candlelight vigils were held across Las Vegas overnight in honor of those who went to that country music concert and never made it home. As we've been telling you, the shooter was 64 year old Stephen Paddock. He broke two of the windows in his suite on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel along the famed Las Vegas Strip. Then he shot into the crowd of 22,000 people below. He took his own life before police got into his room. They found 23 firearms in that hotel, including an assault rifle modified to fire like an automatic machine gun. 19 more firearms and ammunition were also found in his home in Mesquite, Nevada. His brother is dumbfounded. Steve had nothing to do with any political organization, religious organization, no white supremacists, nothing. Police say they did find several tapes and a video camera in the room. Investigators hope that evidence could offer some insight into a motive. You are worthy of all praise. And my Meantime, people sang as a way to express their own emotions at a gathering at a church along the Vegas Strip last night. And take a look at this. Las Vegas City Hall going blue, as you see in the background there, lit up red, white, and blue in honor of the shooting of the victims. President Trump led a moment of silence for the victims in Las Vegas with First Lady Melania Trump. He will travel travel to Las Vegas tomorrow to visit with the first responders and the family of the victims. Today, though, he is in Puerto Rico. Are you in light of Sunday's attacks in Las Vegas, there was also an outpouring of generosity across this country, including right here at home and in Stockton. People giving blood to those who desperately need it right now. Walt Gray joins us with more on what we are finding this morning, Walt, and people wanted to help in any way they could yesterday. We saw lines of people mm -hmm. outside of blood donation centers, and we asked what did people say about why they rushed to go and donate blood? Yeah, Dana, when tragedy strikes, they use up their supply, and now is the time to replenish that stock because you never know when the next disaster or something like this happens again. That's right. And they say giving blood one time can help to save three people's yeah. lives. And so it certainly is something that goes a long way, even just for a few minutes, if that makes you feel like you've helped in some way. Good point. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. We do have a crew in Las Vegas right now. Anando Rochita is there and spoke with a nurse who was helping dozens of victims on Sunday night. Photojournalist Hosea Rupert also along with Ananda talked to a person who made a difference in crucial moments after the tragedy. Uh, just devastating and if you are looking for loved ones who are at that concert still, there is a hotline you can call and the number actually changed. So there it is on your screen right there. 1-866-535-5654. Again, that's 1-866-535-5654. And of course, stay up to date with us right here on the air and online, abc10.com. As I toss it over to Michelle Apon, one thing that we had both been talking about this morning, Michelle, is that GoFundMe page helping the victims now at $3.2 million. That money. And it has been nearly two weeks since Hurricane Maria battered Puerto Rico. President Trump is visiting the island today. And get this, 95% of people who live there are still without power. Many do not have cell service or gas lines. More than 13,000 troops and civilians are working together to hand out 1 million meals, 2 million gallons of water. We'll have more on the president's visit to the island later in this hour, but a lot of people there locally are saying we need more help. The world continues to react this morning to Sunday shootings in Las Vegas, and we have a family therapist in studio who will help answer any of those questions, any of the anxieties you may have to help us understand how to cope with the country's latest tragedy. If you have questions, please post them now on our Facebook page. 
Welcome back. It is now 9 uh, 13 on your Tuesday morning. Well, we know that everything that has happened in Las Vegas over the last few days is weighing heavy, not only on you at home and your family members, but also us in the newsroom. So we wanted to bring in Deloy Link, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist to talk a little bit about how to get through big tragedies like this. A lot of people, of course, are just looking for some bit of positivity and, and knowing how to move on from this. And we want to start with the conversation with children mm -hmm. for parents that are watching. What's the best way to approach maybe if your child comes up to you and has questions about what happened? Well, children will definitely have questions about what happened. We mm -hmm. can't keep our kids away from the news. We can't keep them away from social media. Right. Yeah, so the first thing that I think that parents need to do is gauge the age and the stage of development that the child is in. Okay. Because the younger the child, the less they'll probably know. Mm. And the impact, because of the less that you already know, is going to be different than a teenager or even a tween who is gonna know a lot more. They mm. have access to the social media, they have mm. access to TV, and they're paying attention to their world. Right, right, right. Let's talk about social media because mm -hmm. 15 years ago, if there was something of this nature that happened, which it did, but right. the, the the scope of how we receive the information has changed so much with social media and having the sounds of the gunfire at your fingertips with your phone, scrolling through Instagram, seeing people's accounts firsthand of what they went through. How do we separate ourselves from that? What is the best way to, should we put our phones down for a little while? What would you recommend? Well, you know, you can't, you can't escape yeah. because um, this is the way that teenagers keep in contact with their friends. So right. they're going to see this. I think that what we all need to understand is that the, the, the part of how you talk about this as a family mm -hmm. is going to be instrumental. So what something like this can do is bring up conversations. Mm -hmm. This is talk that we can have at dinner time. This is why um, myself as a therapist and, and many parents still like the idea of having family dinners mm -hmm. because we can bring up what our families think about something like this. It can spark political conversations mm -hmm. that are good for teenagers to be thinking about. Right. Yeah. Moving to, you know, I know that for a lot of people, um, this happened at a concert. Mm -hmm. It's in a place where you're in your most vulnerable state of mind. Um, in this particular location, of course, and as we show this video, we want to give you a warning that it's, it's difficult to look at, and please, viewer discretion is advised. But, you know, this was something that no one saw coming. Right. No matter how many security officials you had on the ground, no matter how many metal detectors you had people walk through, they couldn't have prepared for this as safe as this True. city is. Yes. So moving forward, for people going to a, an event with another crowd, I mean, what would be your first bit of advice for people moving forward if they feel anxious now as a result? Yeah, well, the first thing is you have to prepare yourself by paying attention to your surroundings, mm -hmm. paying attention to where you are, knowing who you're with, right. knowing where they're going. I'm going to the bathroom, be with somebody. I'm going to get a beverage, be with somebody, yeah. and know where the escape routes are. I think that that is the most important thing. There's mm -hmm. another important thing, yeah. and that is that you need to consider where there is shelter, okay? Because mm -hmm. if you can get behind shelter and if you can't be seen, there's less likelihood that you're going to be targeted. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, depending on how the lighting is in the venue where you're at, you can get on the ground and you can stay on the ground. In other venues, like what happened uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. is it was completely lit up. I mean, right. you could see everything. Uh -huh. the, the villain, the shooter, could see everything. Yeah. And uh, you were, you were in bright lights and where exposed. exactly yeah. and and so you do need to know where the escape routes are you need to know where your friends are and you need to have um, in the back of your mind just kind of a general idea of where you're gonna go yeah. if tragedy strikes I mean this conversation we could have this for for many more minutes and mm -hmm. I'm so appreciative that you were able to come in and share your your professional advice with us I know this is something that we've had a lot of conversations about how to cope with things like this unfortunately it's happened all too often. Mm -hmm. um, if you want more information, if you have more questions, of course, we will relay them to Deloitte. This is something that we want to keep the conversation going because we know many of you are feeling away right now. So abc10.com is where you can go for more information and of course our Facebook page if you have questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.